All right, so this is kind of the goal for the project. We want to create a, a take a photograph, drop a few models in, try to line up the perspective of the scene, and then also line up uh, the lighting so it looks fairly believable. Um, you know, I could really push this a lot farther in terms of the textures, the lighting, the colors, all those things to get it to be better. But again, this is just sort of our kind of down and dirty way of working with this today. So the first thing we want to do is um, is open up a new file here. There we go. Uh, the first thing we want to do is create a background. Okay. In order to do this, we need uh, a background. So you can just go and grab a background, right? And then also um, a material. And in this case, what we want for our material, typically you don't want to have specular on. So the first thing I do is turn that off because you don't want your uh, background image to be shiny or reflect light in any sort of way. Uh, and then uh, just grab an image. And um, let's see, what image did I use here? This one. Okay. Uh, yes, that. Oh, that's not the image I wanted. I think I wanted this image. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then uh, you can just simply drop that material onto the background and you'll see that it pops up in your scene. Okay. So once you do that, the background, no, now as you notice that as I move around, you know, the background doesn't change. The background is fixed to the camera. Okay. So it's always going to be that sort of static background. So what we need to do is kind of line up the scene uh, to match with the perspective. So one, one easy way to do that is just to kind of move the, the plane around a little bit. So if I drop this down, if I rotate it a little bit, what you're trying to do is, is kind of visually line up. Notice the horizon. I'm trying to get the horizon to kind of match with the horizon of the setting. So that looks actually pretty good. It looks like these lines are kind of running along the sand. They're kind of going back into perspective a little bit. So you, you can kind of make those adjustments accordingly. Um, so once you get it, and, and again, with this, it's just kind of trial and error, right? You just kind of play around until you get it to be close. That's the best thing to do. There are ways to get it more specific, but again, today is just kind of the simple, kind of easy way to do this. The next thing I want to do is drop in um, a plane. We want to be able to have a surface to catch the shadows, to drop an object to look like it's sitting on the sand in that scene. And so what we can do is just grab either a disc or a plane, something flat, uh, the plane is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let's try 800 by 800. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to kind of move it a little bit further out in the setting here. Actually make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 1,000. Whoops. Where did we go here? 1,000 by 1,000. All right. Uh, now here's the part that's important. If I render this out, you'll see that it just looks like a black plane on the on the background, right? It, it interrupts the background essentially. So what we need to do here is drop that material onto the plane. Okay. Now, if we do that and render it out, notice that it just looks like the whole image, like laying flat on the sand, but in a different sort of way. So what we need to do is change the uh, projection. So if you go, if you click on the material in the objects uh, manager. And go down to the projection. If you change projection to frontal right here, then um, uh, then it will be uh, lined up with the scene a lot better. The last thing we need to do with this, though, is we also need to add a tag. And in this case, we need to add uh, a compositing tag. So if you go up to in the objects manager, click on tags. Make sure that the plane is selected so the tag goes to the plane. Go to Cinema 4D tags and then go to compositing, okay? Compositing tag. When you do that, you get a whole new menu down below. I'm going to move this over. I'm sorry, my window is a little bit stretched here. Let's see. Sorry about that. Let's shrink this down. There we go. Easier to see. Okay, so um, here we have all these different options. The first thing that you want to do is select uh, compositing background, right? When you, when you select this, What's going to happen is that it's going to try to blend that prefrontal projection in with your background image that you have with the background. Okay, so the two are going to be combined. Now this tag is actually really helpful because sometimes you want to um, have an object, maybe you don't want it to cast shadows, 
So if you have an object set up in a scene and you want to have an image on it, but you don't want that image to cast a shadow because you have light in the scene, you can click it off and it won't cast a shadow. You can use, you can, if you don't want it to receive a shadow, you can click that off. So compositing tag will allow you to have a lot more control as to how those illusions are set up. So, um, so I've used it actually a lot when I'm, when I'm working with, especially when I'm working with photographic images in three-dimensional space. Some things you want to have cast light. You don't want them to receive reflections or shadows. You can really have a lot of control that way. So I'm just going to just simply select compositing with the background. And then uh, when we render this out, now notice everything is sort of seamless. <coughs> that, that projection kind of maps over that, that plane. And now uh, we don't see it in the setting anymore. It's going to receive shadows, and it's going to be able to hold the objects that we want. But we don't see it in a different sort of light. So if we, uh, you know, if we bring in an object, um, I don't know, let's just say one of my, my favorite guys here, a little platonic object, put this in the setting, okay? And, uh, you know, now you can see that uh, it's, you know, the plane is the ground, right? So if I push this a little farther down and render this out, now it looks like it's kind of in the ground of that plane. So, uh, but of course we don't have any light in here to give us those shadows. So uh, if we pop in a light... Now this part is also a little bit of trial and error, okay? So um, what I typically do here is kind of look for, look in the photograph. Notice the, the foam on the beach here, the shadow is, is on the, the right side, kind of the lower right side, so the sun is definitely coming from the left side of the composition. So, um, you know, I might just want to do an overview shot here. Here's my object. Uh, kind of like move this out this way. Mm -hmm. Maybe back this way a little bit more, kind of try to get it, and then also bring it up a little bit. So again, this is a, just kind of a you know a, a trial and error, kind of like moving things around, try to figure out where where does it look good in the scene, and then of course if we put um, some shadows on here, area shadow works pretty good. Uh, then we can see how this lines up. So we render this out. Okay, so notice what's happening. The shadow is now cast onto the plane, but because the plane has a frontal projection and it's composited with a background, it's going to fall over that image again. Okay, and you know it doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty good. The shadow lines up fairly well with the shadow of the sand, and um, and uh, you know you can make definitely make some adjustments. So in this case, what I would do is change the density of the shadow. You know, maybe drop this down to ninety percent. Um, I don't like black as a shadow color. I tend to like more of a blue violet. So I'll just grab kind of a violet color over here. And, uh, you know, you can play around with that a little bit. That looks a little bit better. You can also change uh, the color of the light. So, you know, sunlight's going to be a little bit warmer. So I'm just going to make this, this a little bit warmer hue overall. And, you know, some subtle things like that are really going to help a lot. Uh, the last thing that I like to include in a scene like this would be... Um, Go to effects in the render settings and add some ambient occlusion. And that is also going to give it a little more presence, uh, make it look, see, get a little bit more shadow on the ground there, and those kind of elements coming together. So, uh, so when I go back to the other scene I was working with, um, there we go. Uh, so, in this case, you know, I have multiple objects set up and uh, in this case, I used a disk for that for that same sort of thing. But you, know, you can have multiple objects in the scene, uh, allow them to interact in that sort of way. So a scene like this could be could be fun to play, maybe play with dynamics. You know, you could have some things kind of drop and roll around on the sand, or or in, in, you know include in that sort of way. Uh, again, if you had an object you know hovering above, the shadow would cast onto the plane. You know, wherever you work in the scene. Uh, you can you can sort of develop the, the composition in that way. So this is sort of step one to our to our exploration of compositing uh, three dimensional objects in a photographic scene in a two dimensional uh, sort of scene that we're working with. So uh, the first thing I want you guys to do is start to collect some photographs and just really play around. Um, also, you know this mo I didn't model this TV. This is a, a model that I got for free from the Pixel Lab. So you can also start to play around with um, you know, some models that you find online. I think it's a good way to, to play around with things, see what happens, you know, see how things are made as well. It's a good exploration in that sort of setting.